Well, it's super great to welcome you all back to our coaching cafe. This is the first one that we're doing for this half of the year. We had a massive um, program for Coach Week uh, and then uh, lockdowns happened. I went into state, uh, delivered lots of programs um, into state, which was wonderful. Um, and then we went, hang on a second, we haven't had a coaching cafe for ages. So let, let's come back. It's so great to see so many people um, on the line. And uh, so welcome to you all. I know that half of us are in lockdown which is which is pretty horrible um, but isn't it nice to just come together um, together as an alumni and a community so if you don't know me my name is Natalie Ashdown from the Open Door Coaching Group and today I'm excited to present um, best practice in implementing coaching culture. Now the reason I wanted to introduce you to this topic is because I've actually just spent the past week or two weeks re-recording some of the the videos and the webinars for our diploma program and really focusing on our coaching culture framework and making sure that, um, that the information we're presenting on our diploma is just the way it needs to be. And I thought, let's just do a coaching cafe and get us all excited about the culture of coaching as well. So that, that was the impetus behind um, kicking off our series for the second half of the year. I've just been talking to Bridget and we've got the whole of August and the rest of September planned out as well. So that's really exciting. So before I begin, let me acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodians on the lands on which we're all meeting today all around Australia and internationally, which is um, wonderful to have um, the people that join us um, from overseas as well. Uh, we acknowledge the continuing connection to the land, waters and communities of Australia, and we pay our respects to them and to their elders past, present and emerging. So our agenda for our short coaching cafe uh, today, I want to define coaching culture. So let's take a look at what are we talking about when we're talking about coaching culture. I want to introduce you to the coaching culture framework because some of you will have seen this in our diploma program um, or our, our coaching certification program. Some of you will be new to it. So it's great to, um, to see the framework. Uh, and I want to talk about best practice. So shout out to the Air Force people who are on the line. I can see there's a lot of you there. Uh, Anish Squadron Leader Anita Green presented uh, the Air Force uh, Coaching, the program that they had been implementing as part of our Coach Week, International Coach Week 2021 series. So you can listen to that, you can pick up the pick up um, her wonderful talk. It was a one-hour talk about the implementation of coaching into our Air Force. And uh, you can pick that up off our website, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring in a few of those tip bits uh, to talk about best practice um, as we go along as well. So for those of you that are new to the Coaching Cafe, uh, welcome. We are all about creating community. Uh, we like to share learned experiences about coaching, jump in with your ideas and thoughts. Um, the best way to do that is by hitting the chat box and sending a message to me as the host or all the panellists, um, so, so to everyone, um, the panellists and attendees, uh, to share your information. I can pick up your comments um, as we go along as well. We are about coming together every Friday. I know we've had a couple of weeks off, but I'm um, looking to have some thought-provoking conversations around coaching, keep our coaching skills up. We've got a really great program planned for you uh, coming up over the next few weeks, looking at the differences between, uh, say, entry-level coaching and how do we advance our coaching skills as well. So lots of um, great things. Uh, of course, if you are here because you want to get your ICF uh, continuing coach education units, your professional development units, you can send a message to support at Open Door Coaching. And I think we've got some automatic thing going out now as well. But you do have to stay on the line for the full 30 minutes um, to get that. So welcome. Please interact as much as you like um, with uh, by um, uh, hitting the chat box there. Um, and as I said, it's so great to be back. So great to see so many of you coming on the line uh, this afternoon. So the coaching culture framework that I'm going to show you uh, this afternoon is actually presented and it's a, it's a key feature of our Diploma of Organisational Coaching. It's also a key feature of our uh, coaching culture certification. We break it down in that certification. And it was first so introduced in Bring Out Their Best, um, the book that we wrote, um, I wrote back in, gosh, the first um, edition I think was in 2010. So some of you will be familiar with the waterfall approach um, that we have in Bring Out Their Best. Um, I'm 
I'm, I'm, I do, you can coach me. I do have to write the third edition um, because so someone can look, I've got how many coaches on the line. I'm going to be in big trouble if I say that, aren't I? But anyway, we've got, uh, <laughs> everyone's going to be jumping and saying, I'll coach you. Um, yeah, so you do need to coach me because I have to produce the third edition, which will also feature the new version of the coaching culture map as well. So let's uh, talk about it. So let's get into our conversation about coaching culture. Feel free. There's so much experience on the line. So feel free to really jump in here, uh, share your thoughts with me. I'm very open to hearing what you think. Uh, when we think about culture, I did a lot of work uh, last year in my doctorate around, around organisational culture, organisational change. And a lot of the um, work was really focusing on what is culture and what does it mean? So what we're talking about here is what is a coaching culture? We are talking about the skills that we all take for granted, really. Our listening, our asking questions, our open conversations, giving feedback that focus on forward momentum, supportive language behaviours, the principles, um, the non-judgmental. We're not jumping into the space and solving people's problems. We're not mentoring. Those skills that we take for that, that, that we all know and that we're all finessing um, throughout our coaching careers. That's the coaching part of it. And then we think about the culture part of it. You add those coach, coaching skills to the culture part of it. And when we're thinking about culture, I used to just say it's the way we do things around here. So it's the predominant way we do things around here. But um, as I've been studying culture from an academic point of view more and more, a lot of the, the discussion is that, that it's a state or a property uh, that emerges, actually. So culture is not something that we can put our finger on it. It's something that emerges within a team or a family or a business unit or an organisation. It emerges as we have shared values, beliefs, artefacts, meaning the, um, the, the job descriptions, the posters on the walls, things like that. It emerges as the way that we do things around here. And I really love that. Um, I like that theme about that culture emerges because some people say, well, we've got to work on the culture. It's like, well, the work that we do in coaching and in bringing our coaching skills through, what we see is that over time, coaching emerges as the way we do things. And then we could say that in our organisation or in our team or in our leadership team, we have a culture of coaching. Now, of course, it's not the only thing that we're doing. It's not the only culture. We still have the organisational culture or the business unit coach culture. Um, so we can define organisations by their cultures. It, it's not the only thing that's in the organisation, um, but it's a part of what we do. And, and I really, as I said, like that idea around a, a culture emerging because as we start to spread coaching out through the organization that's where we start to see um, the really great benefits of coaching which we are all familiar with so feel free to jump into the chat thanks Samantha yeah I thought I'd go video on why not you know um, she says nice to see you so feel free to jump into the chat um, I know there's there's other people with a lot of experience in this regards um, you know that, that know about culture so feel free to jump in and tell me what you're thinking here as well Alrighty, so what are the characteristics? So when we're thinking about, do we have, do we have this culture of coaching? Do we have an emergent property here where, where this idea of coaching is emerging, you know, in our squadron, in our business unit, in our, in our organisation? Let's have a think about it. Well, what we do see from a best practice point of view, so we have been implementing coaching with organisations, you know, for over 15 years now. Um, and what we do see in terms of the characteristics of, of a culture of coaching is that the leaders are engaged in and they're role modelling coaching. And quite often there's a clear mandate. So there'll be a mandate that's been, that's come down from the top potentially that this is something that we want to do. And we want to do this because we want to build high performance. We want to build capability. We want to achieve the workforce strategy and coaching is going to enable the workforce strategy. And I'll talk a bit more about that when I show you the framework as well. Other characteristics, as I mentioned, coaching is going to be linked to business strategy, development programs, 
job descriptions, those kind of things. So we start to see coaching is actually as is, is linked through to the business strategy and then it filters down into development programs as well. And that might be one-on-one -on -one coaching programs or it might be team coaching programs. You know, there's variations there as well. We will see a, a culture of coaching when there's a clear methodology or set of coaching tools. So Air Force, for example, have picked up the methodology and the coaching tools from the Certificate Forum Workplace and Business Coaching, and that's what's been brought through the organisation, through the other programs they're doing. And a number of other organisations have done it. Now, whether it's um, uh, the set of coaching tools that you have through the Certificate for in Workplace and Business Coaching or another methodology, what we what we do see is that it's it's clear so in the organization there's a clear methodology or set of coaching tools not just kind of a hodgepodge of we we did a bit of this and a bit of that um, so when we're starting to see the real culture that we're talking about um, we're going to see that the language of coaching is used in everyday speak now this is something I really love too because as you are doing more coaching of the people around you they are starting to uh, coach you back so you know you might they might you might say you might hear them say well you know what do you think the options are or or you know I'm thinking about a reframe on this or so that that language that you and I take for granted other people are starting to use it and that's so fantastic when we start to hear um, people use that because it what you know then is that your influence and your role modeling of coaching is starting to filter out and, and that's what we like um i imagine like a, uh like a the world map or the map of australia with lights on it you know and it just lights all these little lights start to light up and you know as all the lights light up they start to join up and that's that's where we start to see the the joining of the coaching and and the implementation of coaching because all these little lights have um, are lighting up where the champions are starting to bring coaching through so anyway that's the visual i have or you might see a big map with pins on it, you know, and there's lots of pins. I might do that, actually. I love that idea. So put pins in the map where we've got coaching here and coaching there and coaching, you know, that would be really cool. Then they'll, they'll all join up. We know that coaching, uh, there's a culture of coaching when there's a commitment to implementing formal programs or there's a lot of informal coaching occurring as well. So even if the organisation is not um, introducing formal programs, there's a lot of the informal going on, which is great because we can influence at different levels um, as well. We also hear visible signs of coaching. You hear the questions, you can see some posters, um, people might have post-it notes around there. Uh, around their screens or, or posters on the wall or whatever it might be, um, where we actually see some visible signs of coaching as well. Not only that, we see the visible signs in terms of the results that people are achieving as well. We will have a culture of coaching when coaching is implemented across hierarchical boundaries. So we can coach upwards, coach downwards, coach sideways. Coaching is being implemented at different levels of the organisation. So, for example, um, at Air Force, we've had some, some one stars um, come on our program. We've had um, uh, commanding officers. We've had um, air commodores. We've had people across all the different ranks different um, different uh, squadrons uh, coming on the program. So a spread out across hierarchical boundaries, which is very exciting as well. Uh, and of course, the workplace looks, feels and sounds like a great place. So we're going to see more of that as we do more coaching, people take more accountability, they're achieving together, people capabilities growing, uh, we're achieving high performance together, it'll look and feel and sound like a great place. So there's some of the characteristics. Um, and Neil, as Neil says um, here, you allow culture to emerge, it can, it can be influenced positively or negatively. That's right. Uh, I love what you say there, Neil. So keep, keep jumping in everybody. Um, because a culture is going to emerge anyway, isn't it? As people come and go, um, as, as, as people achieve things and projects and new things happen, a culture is going to emerge. We can influence that culture positively through the work we're doing, or it could be influenced negatively um, as well. So yeah, good pick up there, thank you. Great. 
So there's some of the characteristics we're thinking about. You can think about your organization. Are we putting some ticks in those boxes there as well? Let's talk about our coaching culture framework. So um, if you have bring out their best, you will be familiar with the waterfall framework. And about uh, the beginning of 2020, I think, uh, we redesigned the waterfall. Um, when, when the diploma program went through its big re reaccreditation process with ASQA, our governing body. It went through a big um, iteration. And I remember when Bridget Calvert, our learning and development manager, many of you will be familiar with Bridget. She and I sat down and I said, this, this, this model is no longer working for me. We need, we need a new framework. Um, and I actually still have the original picture that I drew. I I, I, I got the old framework and I started cutting it up and chopping it up and I was, you know, doing a bit of a mind map and, and, um, and, I, and, and I've still got the old chopped up thing that's, that's on my wall. And here's the gorgeous designed up, <laughs> designed up version of it. But this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the framework for implementing um, coaching within, a, in, within the workplace. And this truly is best practice. We've reviewed many different case studies on coaching. We've seen many organisations. We've been involved in the implementation of coaching ourselves. And this is what we find really is the best practice. So um, you can see actually that the map, the framework is uh, split into two parts. You've got the green part up the top, which is the strategy and the, what we call the setup. And then you've got the, the, the bottom part, which is the enablers and the implementation. And this idea came from us through the discussions we had with Air Force, where, where someone, um, you know, we were talking about coaching enabling workforce strategy, coaching enabling the organization's values and visions and coaching enabling, um, being enabled through organizational artifacts like job descriptions. And all of a sudden it came to me that there's, there's the top part, which is the strategy um, and, and what's most important. And then there's the bottom part, which actually enables the top part if, if that's um, if that makes sense. But then I also felt like we needed something in the middle. <laughs> so what, what's in the middle is coaching principles. Now, this is really important because when we look at the framework, you can think about it from an influence point of view. So some of us aren't able to necessarily influence in our roles, the strategy of the organization. Some of us in our roles don't have the opportunity to uh, influence the job descriptions and the performance matrices, for example. Um, some of us in our roles don't have the opportunity to actually influence the entire business unit or department, which is the green part there. But what we all have the opportunity to do is to, to live and role model the coaching principles. So I love that the, the coaching principles is in the middle because it's, it, everything starts with those coaching principles. It starts with who we want to be as leaders, who, how we want to show up as coaches and as role models. And it was Paula Jones Hunt, um, a long-term friend of mine and colleague who said, you know, coaching starts with all of us, uh, but it starts with one good coaching question at a time. So I always think about that, you know, we may not be able to influence the entire framework, um, but what we can do is, is how we show up and we can influence ourselves through self-coaching and the people around us, even you know, as ho at home, as you know, um, through living those coaching principles. So that's where we're, where we're kind of headed um, with, the, with the overall map. Feel free, jump in, make any comments you like, um, ask questions as you go as well. What I'd like to go on and show you now is just explain a bit more of the, uh, of the dimensions or the, the pieces of the pie, if you like, that we have in the framework. So the, if we just focus now on the strategy or the setup, we've got three main pieces of the pie. And of course, there can be other pieces. <laughs> Of course, you know me well, you know that means I need to change the diagrams wherever they're written. But anyway, uh, a bit like our um, sources of conflict uh, diagram <laughs> when someone clever comes up with another, another piece of the pie. Anyway, what we're thinking about here with the, with the uh, strategy is that we've got the blue, which is the middle piece. That's the organization's values and the vision. So the, the framework, um, everything underneath um, 
that we are doing is really everything we're doing from a coaching point of view is to support the organization's values and vision. And there's if we pull off any of the organizations that we've worked with and we look at their, their values and their vision, their mission statements, um, we can see how coaching can actually be a part of that. So if you think about respect, integrity, agility, uh, those kind of uh, communication, teamwork, excellence, you know, coaching supports all of those values and vision. Um, coaching is also supporting the organizational workforce strategy. So what we're talking about there is, is that the part of the strategy and part of the setup of a coaching culture is that we do have to have somewhere in the workforce strategy, somewhere in the guiding documents, we need to see some reference to coaching or or that the coaching we're doing is linked through to that. So, um, for example, when when Air Force has changed now, but when they had their um, when Air Force was uh, looking at um, Plan Jericho and the people capability vector um, of the plans, they talked about people capability, um, the ability to be agile to respond to Australia's needs, and the coaching that was done at Air Force was linked through to the workforce strategy, a really important thing um, that we're supporting the workforce strategy. So some of the strategy work, set up work we'll do is around uh, thinking about how we link to workforce strategy, the organisation values and visions, but also seeing if there's ways of implementing, um, you know, using the actual words. So coaching is, is a part of that strategy as well. Um, and in the diploma, we've got some really great examples of where where the organizational strategy and a couple of government departments specifically references coaching as the way that they're gonna pull off the strategy. We've also got the organizational artifacts and in part of the coaching culture, the implementation of coaching culture, you're, you're going to be working, hopefully, or people in the organization will be working on or organizational artifacts. Now, what these are, are things like uh, internal websites or intranets, um, posters, uh, coaching being implemented into job descriptions, into performance reviews. So you might have a performance management system, but coaching is part of, or the coaching we do is part of the performance management system. And particularly at Air Force, um, we saw this, uh, the implementation around organisational artefacts has been truly best practice it's it's wonderful what's happening there they've got an intranet where they've got all the coaches listed once they become qualified um, there's a number of um, places I go to where I see the posters on the wall with the grow model um, the coaching uh, a number of uh, different squadrons I've worked with have got a coaching charter so if you've got coaching charters um, if you've got these kind of um, job descriptions uh, people are in their signature blocks of calling themselves coaches. So these are all the visible signs that we see that we have a, a, a culture of coaching um, coming through the organisation. And it's, it's always really exciting as well. All right. Now, we only have half an hour together, so I'll, I'll keep it moving. Feel free to jump in. Of course, you can ask me plenty of questions um, afterwards or pin me an email, whatever you like. But the enablers and the implementation. So these, this is the lower half of the diagram now, which supports, and I love the idea that it supports the, the strategy, it supports the artifacts, it supports the organization's values and vision. What I also like about um, the, um, what I like about the uh, lower half is that from a influencing point of view, uh, we could actually be influencing any of these different uh, areas. So we could be doing individual and team coaching. Uh, we could be championing. I know there's a lot of champions on the line um, with us today. We could be championing coaching into our business, uh, into our department, into our squadron, for example. So maybe you're heading up the implementation of coaching um, into a department or a business unit. Uh, there's many, I think, you know, just scanning down the list here, a lot of you have become accredited in coaching. So we're, we've become, you've achieved the certificate for in workplace and business coaching or you're on your way. Um, so the implementation of coaching from a best practice point of view, we will see organisations introducing qualifications. So a cohort or a number of different people within the organisation will become um, accredited coaches as internal coaches. 
Now, this has always been important to us. And it's not just because, yes, we're in the business of that, but it's, it's important because the implementation of qualified coaches into organizations enables sustainability. So you can have any, uh, an external coach come in and do coaching. We do a lot of that uh, executive coaching um, and running, um, running coaching programs. But it's, it's when the uh, qualified coaches are actually in the organization, they create the sustainability because they're qualified and they can keep that momentum going. Uh, yeah, that's really nice, um, Neil. I like that. The five pillars supporting the plan or the strategy. So I like it as, as the idea of pillars as well. Yeah, I just got a new visual on that. That's very cool. Thank you. Um, those internal coaches can also then roll out uh, coaching programs such as a leadership a leader as coach program, a coaching 101. Um, and for those of you that heard uh, Anita Green, squadron leader Anita Green's talk, she talked about how the qualified coaches at Air Force, can you believe it? They have rolled out the Coaching 101 program to over 9,000 people. So this is amazing. This is, this is where we start to see the implementation of coaching. 9,000 people have been exposed to a one-day coaching program. And that's been driven by the internal coaches, which just, it makes my heart sing because um, that kind of wide scale implementation um, is amazing to see. So we can be uh, we can be doing individual and team coaching. We can be looking champion in our business unit, doing uh, a becoming accredited coaches like you are, rolling out to having someone like Open Door roll out a leader as coach program um, or rolling it out yourself. And then the other piece, which is the red piece, is evaluation of feedback loops. So the more we do to get those success stories, those that evaluation, the feedback loops, um, the more we do of that, uh, the more that we can actually support and, and ensure that what we're doing is actually supporting the top half of the diagram as well. So uh, there's been a couple of major uh, pieces of work I've done in that area around evaluation and feedback, um, continually finding out um, you know, what's going well, what needs to be improved. And of course, all the feedback that you give us from the programs that just continually improves our programs as well. So really important. Alrighty, we've got a couple of minutes for questions. There's the whole, um, there's the, oops, sorry, let me I'll go back, um, go back one. That's the whole um, framework um, for you put back in it together. Let me just check a couple of questions I've got here as well. Um, so Carolyn asks, what are the thoughts on trainers and assessors doing specific coaching courses to help their students and the workplaces? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, like you know me, not just because we run coach training, um, but because I truly have always believed in sustainability, that um, it's important that the, the coaching within the organisation can be sustained from within the organisation. Yes, you have experts um, who are supporting that as well, but the more we, we build it from within the organisation, uh, the better it is because it's the organization's culture. It's the contextualization. It's the way it's going to work. It's the way that coaching works within Air Force, um, which is so important. And quite often it's, it's really only those internal trainers and assessors um, that can do that. And yes, if you've got trainers and assessors in other disciplines, I would 100% have them do coaching. Air Force has done that. Um, they're, 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 they're trainers and assessors um, through the different training schools at Air Force, uh, recruit training school, officers training school. Um, those people have come on the coaching course and they are using coaching as part of the actual training course. Um, they, are, they are doing technical training they're doing mindset training and mastery. Uh, they're doing um, all of the work you have to do around um, the Air Force cultural training. Um, and then they're, they're doing coaching training to, to support all of that work they're doing as well, which is, which is wonderful. Plus it makes for a really great program when you've got some really excellent trainers and assessors on the program, because we can share a lot of ideas as well as we go. So that's really cool. 
Um, someone also asked me about the difference between um, like doing the certificate four in training and assessment and doing, for example, the certificate four in workplace and business coaching. 100%, if you, you know, like the certificate four in training assessment, ugh, it's, 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 not, it's not a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, <laughs> they're two completely different programs. So if you need to talk to me a bit more about that, um, you know, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And great to see you, Lorraine. Um, gee, we need to get some of these champions um, back on the line and tell us how they have implemented coaching as well. So um, University of Wollongong, um, yeah, these type of great organizations, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And yes, um, no worries, Caroline, if you want some more information, we can give you some more information as well. Great. A uh, couple more minutes. Any questions you have, thoughts, comments? Um, hopefully it gets you thinking about, well, the way that we can use the coaching culture map is to think about, well, where are we? So let me tab back um, uh, just quickly as well. Where are we as an organisation? Where are we as a team? Uh, where are we as a squadron or a business unit, if you like? Um, are we working in the green area? We've got the brown going. We've got some nice yellow going. And that is all supporting uh, the strategy that we're that we're focusing on. So uh, with Air Force, with a number of the stakeholders, I've sat down and we've had specific discussions around each of the different parts of the map um, and the framework to go, okay, where are we at? What's happening in this area? What more can we do to influence this area? Where do we need to influence, which are great discussions to have as well. As I said, we are, we are all about building people capability, uh, building organisations that we can be proud of, um, building organisations where, you know, what we take for granted is the way we do things around here. Uh, and the map, the framework is a good way of thinking about it as well. And yeah, absolutely, Neil, that's a really nice way of finishing well to always ask, what are we doing well? and what needs more work. So uh, that, that spirit of continuous improvement, uh, you know, it's something we really believe in. Um, and so when we're sitting down and we're thinking about the coaching uh, that we're doing within the organization, we can, we can think about it from that perspective as well. Yeah, that's the evaluation feedback loop for me, yeah. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. It's been great to be able to share with you the coaching culture framework as well. Again, uh, we do have a um, coaching for performance conversations program coming up. Um, so it's got some of the really great tools from our coaching uh, from our Cert 4 in it. It's a two-day program. So if some of your leaders or managers want just a, a, a taster, like not the full program, but just a taster, um, hit us up and ask us about the Coaching for Performance Conversations as well. So um, it's been so fantastic to have you um, all on the line. On our website, you'll also see uh, the, the wonderful webinar uh, that uh, squadron leader Anita Green did as part of our coach week so take some time honestly if you want to be inspired have a listen to that webinar I could listen to it over and over um, it's very inspiring fantastic awesome well we're done everybody thanks it's so great um shout out to you all um thanks Jenny thank you Ben Michelle Bye. So nice to have you. Thank you. Nicole, isn't it nice to be back? I agree with you. Thank you so much. Sandy, cheers to you. Michelle, Kelly. Fantastic. Jono, lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us. Nicole, Guy, welcome back. Yeah, please, um, yeah, please um, catch up with us over the next couple of weeks. We've got some really great things to share with you and um, Bridget will be part of that as well. So you'll get her, her great experience as well. Excellent. Thank you, Jacinta. Great to see you. Fantastic. Samantha, thank you. Awesome to see you, Nella. Talk to you soon. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. I'll hang around for a couple of minutes if you want to ask me any questions um, as well. Beautiful. Great to see you all. Thank you so much. That's the way, and we'll make sure that we tick over the 30 minutes for your, your coaching accreditation as well. <laughs> ah, T Morgan, excellent, Mara and Cliff. So, Cliff, it's so great to see you both as well. <laughs> I love it. Working from home too, no doubt. So, um, yeah, that's cool. 
<laughs> I love that team, Morgan. That's very cool. <laughs> That's the way. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, have a wonderful, it's Friday. We always say fantastic, it's Friday. Uh, have a wonderful Friday. Have an awesome weekend, even if you're in lockdown. Um, you know, keep up your exercise, your food, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I will catch up with you at our next coaching cafe. I'll say goodbye for now.